Another non-ideal effect that was mentioned before, um, but we haven't gone over yet, is, is channel length modulation. So in this case, if we look at the cross-section of the, the MOSFET, um, right at the uh, threshold of inversion, I have that induced channel and that induced channel extends between the source and the drain, but right at the drain terminal, uh, it's going to go to a depth of zero. And we said that that didn't change. So we that, that channel was always this length L between the source and the drain, and we, and we said that that didn't change. But what channel length modulation is saying is that uh, that length actually does change. And as we keep on uh, increasing um, the drain to source voltage then the uh, point at which the channel has a depth of zero uh, starts to move back towards the source so uh, that's represented by this delta L here so that's the difference between what we initially said the, the channel length was and this delta L is um, the channel is reduced by that delta L because we increase that drain to source voltage by uh, some delta VDS above the threshold voltage. Now, uh, even if this channel length modulation occurs, I still can get uh, current flowing through the MOSFET uh, because uh, my electrons, let's look at this, this diagram down here, my electrons that are free electrons that are in the induced channel um, once they get to the edge of the space charge region, there's an electric field here that will accelerate them through the space charge region and to the drain. So I'm still getting current um, through this structure. And in fact, the current that I'm getting is going to be described as I sub D prime, and that's going to just be related to the amount of, of or the the channel um, length reduction. So L over L minus delta L times ID. So the current is actually going up when I have uh, this, this channel length modulation. And that's reflected in, if we look at the drain current um, as a function of drain to source voltage for different, these are, these are different curves for different gate voltages. So you can see that um, once I get into saturation, so let me draw that. This is that border between the non-saturation. Everything to the right of the, the dashed line is in saturation. Um, in the ideal case, these curves are all flat, completely horizontal lines in the saturation region. But you can see that experimentally, if you measure that, they're not flat. They have um, some slope to them. And that is from this channel length modulation effect. Uh, what it's effectively saying is that um, now there's some um, resistance that's there in the channel because there's a finite slope. So if we quantify this further, um, this is the, going to be the drain current with channel length modulation. You take the saturation current equation and then you add this term here. Otherwise everything else is the same as the saturation current equation. And in that extra term you have that parameter lambda. That's the channel length uh, modulation parameter. Like I said we also have a, a resistance associated with that. That's R0. So if we take the inverse of the, the differential of the drain current with respect to drain to source uh, voltage then we get this equation to tell us what that um, resistance R0 is. And if this channel length modulation parameter is small, then we can simplify that a bit um, through this equation here. 